there is a sign on your neck that could mean you're about to have a stroke, also known as a cerebrovascular accident, CVA. And there are other signs too. On your body, there are nine warning signs that indicate a stroke is on the way, commonly known as a cerebrovascular accident. In this video, I'm going to tell you the warning signs and give you a golden tip that could save your life. And you need to know about it. And I'm also going to tell you the main mistake, the fatal error when it comes to stroke, which increases your chances of having after effects. If you're having a stroke, it also increases the risk of death. Your chances of surviving drop a lot if you make this mistake here, which is extremely common. How do I know this? Because all of this is backed by scientific evidence. Everything I'm going to tell you is proven. And I've also seen in practice that this mistake, this is why I call it a fatal error, really does increase your chances of having lasting effects or a serious complication from a stroke. So stick around until the end of this video because I'm only going to give this tip to the most engaged viewers after I talk about the size and symptoms. When we talk about stroke, we need to understand that there are two types, two main groups. The very first and by far the most significant category, representing approximately 85% of all recorded strokes, is medically referred to as an ischemic stroke. When we have an interruption of blood flow, it could be because an artery in the neck closed up, was blocked, or it could be because you had a clot that came from the heart, even without any kind of arrhythmia. And the heart sent the clot to the brain, and that area was left without blood flow. This is what's called an ischemic stroke. And the other major group, about 15%, which is also very common, is stroke caused by bleeding. A cerebral hemorrhage when you have bleeding in the brain. You have bleeding in the brain and that region is left without a blood supply. As a result, you're going to have a series of signs and symptoms that will be a big, a major warning sign. Remember, to have a stroke, you don't need to have all of these signs and symptoms. Just one is already a major warning sign and you should seek medical help, okay? And when I say seek medical help, I don't mean scheduling a doctor's appointment. Not for a week from now, two months from now, or even the next day. Nah, not even if it's so. If you have any of the signs and symptoms I'm going to mention here, you need to go to the emergency room right away, okay? At the moment, you're experiencing the sign I'm going to talk about in this video. Deal? So, what are the nine warning signs and symptoms of a stroke? The first one is a change in strength, and this change in strength has a specific characteristic. It will happen on one side of the body. Why? If you have a problem on the left side, seriously, the right side of your body will show this decrease in strength. When I talk about a change in strength, it's because it could be a decrease, or even a total loss of strength, which we call plegia. If it's a total loss of strength, or a paresis, which is a decrease, sometimes just a slight decrease. Sometimes you'll only notice a little change. You might only notice it when you're washing the dishes, for example, or picking up a glass of water. Or maybe when you go to walk to take a stroll, and then you'll notice it. It's not necessarily that the limb or the side of the body will lose all strength. Even a slight decrease in strength is also a major warning sign. Remember, when I say one side of the body, it could be the arm, it could be the leg, or it could be both together, but it won't always be the entire side, okay? It depends on the area of the brain where you have the problem. That's where you'll see this sign. So it could be just in the arm, for example, or just in the leg. Even a slight decrease is already a major warning sign, okay? This isn't the main mistake I'm going to talk about, but it's already one of the key points to pay attention to in this video, all right? Because a lot of people think you have to lose all your strength or that it has to be the whole side of the body. But that's not true. That's the big catch, okay? Even a slight decrease in strength already means you should go to the hospital to get it checked out. When it comes to a stroke, time is crucial. Time can determine whether you'll be left with a lasting effect, whether things will get worse, or if you'll fully recover from the symptoms I'm talking about here. Side number two, and this one is also very common 
which is reduced sensation. And this loss of sensation also will happen suddenly, just like the loss of strength. So one moment you were fine, and suddenly, out of nowhere, you experience this change in sensation. This also tends to show up on just one side of the body. And this loss of sensation can be a change in touch, a tingling feeling, or a numbness where you just don't feel right. You still have strength in that limb. You have strength in your arm, but you feel like it's tingling, for example. This happens all of a sudden. So a change in sensation. In medical terms, we call this paresthesia. All right? So many doctors only talk about paresthesia, but now you already know, right? When you hear that word, you'll understand that it means a decrease in sensation. There are other causes of decreased sensation, such as diabetic neuropathy. There are differences here. With diabetic neuropathy, for example, when you lie down and put a sheet over yourself, you might feel more sensitive, you might feel burning. But neuropathy has two crucial characteristics that help you tell the difference. Here, I'm talking about warning signs. What's the main characteristic here? First, with diabetic neuropathy, unlike a stroke, the symptoms develop gradually. It gets worse, it progresses. As your blood sugar levels rise and aren't corrected, the condition keeps getting worse. So you have this progressive worsening. You won't just lie down. One night, everything was fine. And the next night, you suddenly start to feel a strong loss of sensation. Whoa, that's a sign of a stroke, not diabetic neuropathy. And another big sign to tell them apart is that with diabetic neuropathy, it usually happens on both sides, in both legs, but not here. This is a change in sensation that happens all of a sudden, on just one side. See how important it is for you to understand this. Because a lot of times, since I worked for many years in emergency medicine, this can get really confusing, right? Because the signs and symptoms often get mixed up. So when should you seek help? When should you go to the hospital? So now you already have a lot of answers here. If this is being helpful for you, don't forget to like this video. Let's set a goal of 10,000 likes. Because that way, the system understands that the video is relevant and ends up spreading this information I prepared for you as well. Sign number three is aphasia. What is that? Aphasia? You can't speak properly. Often, you won't be able to pronounce words. You'll forget words. You won't be able to form sentences. For example, there's an impairment in language, in communication. And there's also another form, another warning sign of a stroke, which is dysarthria. The person can speak, but the way they speak, sometimes it sounds like they've taken a sedative or like they're drunk. This actually happened once. There was a case when I was in the emergency room and the patient's family arrived. It seems like he's drunk, but he hasn't had anything to drink. We know this. In reality, that person was having a stroke. So, changes in speech. I want you to remember this. Either the person can't pronounce words or they pronounce them incorrectly. This is also a warning sign that happens suddenly. It's not someone who has always had trouble speaking or never spoke properly, but rather someone who used to speak perfectly and suddenly got much worse. Whoa, that's a warning sign that there could be a blockage in the brain. The fourth sign is mental confusion. Why? Because depending on the area affected, this can show up as disorientation or mental confusion. And here's the main difference from dementia. You always ask, how can I tell the difference? How will I know? Dementia develops gradually over time. Not here. The person was fine, was working, was driving. Then they got home, went to take a shower, and when they came back, they were very confused. Whoa, that's a major warning sign that it could be a stroke. Sign number five is a change in the face. Wait, but what kind of change? Mainly, we see a deviation of the corner of the mouth. What does that mean? The mouth might get pulled to one side. You can see this deviation. This is the most well-known sign of a stroke. You've probably already heard about our fifth sign here, but I couldn't leave it out of the video. So, a change in the corner of the mouth, the mouth gets pulled to one side, even when smiling. This is pretty obvious, but not only that. Why? You have a change in the muscles on the sides of the face. So, since one side pulls more than the other, you get this change. 
there is a really important tip to help you tell this apart from other conditions. In a stroke, it only affects the lower part, the lower half. In other words, it won't affect the eyes. One eye won't droop or be more pulled than the other, okay? When it comes to a stroke, we see this change in the mouth, in this part of the face. Understood? These are also the main differences. There are other types of paralysis, and often, just by looking, only an experienced doctor can determine whether it's a stroke or not. Sign number six is a change in balance, dizziness. It's a change in gait, for example. When trying to walk, this person will stagger, feel dizzy. It's like they're on a ship. This also happens. It's a warning sign, because depending on the area where you're having the stroke, you'll have a certain type of symptom. And this sign here, loss of balance, difficulty walking, dizziness, is a major warning sign. Often, this sign is a reduction in balance. It's less concerning, but it still shouldn't be ignored. Now, you know, if it happens, you should definitely go to the emergency room. Sign number seven. This is a major warning sign that often gets ignored. It's a pain in the neck. Look, this is something interesting I'm going to share with you here. What is it? One of the causes is the interruption of blood flow in the neck arteries, mainly due to fat buildup. So when this artery starts getting blocked, it can cause a change in blood flow, a kind of turbulence in the blood flow. In medical language, that's how we describe it. And what will you actually feel? Mainly when you lie down, when it's quiet, or when you're resting, you might hear a ringing in your ear. That's a result of this murmur, this narrowing, and the change in blood flow. So if you're hearing a ringing in your ear, especially at night when things are usually quieter, that is definitely a big warning sign. And you should see a doctor to get tests done, like a carotid ultrasound. This could save your life. And usually we can take action in cases like this. That's why it's really important to seek medical help. And usually this ringing will follow your heartbeat, which is when the blood flows through there. So a lot of times you'll notice your heart is beating and then there's the ringing. So it's in sync with your heart, but it won't necessarily always be synchronized. Why? Because the patient might have a heart arrhythmia. So you can't really say it's a rhythmic beat, that it's a constant beat, but rather than it follows the beats of the heart because of what I just explained, okay? So a constant ringing is a big warning sign, but it's not talked about much. Maybe you hadn't heard this before. If you haven't heard about this, you should turn on notifications here on the channel because you're learning from these videos. If you're not subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Sign number eight, another sign of a stroke, is a sudden change in vision. You experience a decrease in visual acuity. This also happens all of a sudden. So if you were seen just fine, and then out of nowhere, suddenly, you started having this change, difficulty seeing, that's a major warning sign that it could also be a stroke. And sign number nine is an intense and sudden headache. That headache is different from any you've had before. This headache is really strong. It has a different pattern, it's extremely intense, and it could mean that there's a problem. So that strongest headache of your life, some people describe it as a thunderclap headache or a pain that's really unbearable. But what I wanna make clear here is that it's a headache that's different from your usual, different from your normal pattern. Whoa, that's a major warning sign, especially if it comes along with the other signs and symptoms. And now, what is the big mistake that increases your risk of complications and is also very common? And what's the main tip from this video? Here? Let's start with the tip, and then I'll talk about the mistake. Dale, I want you to remember this. Many times, before you have a stroke, you'll have what's called a mini-stroke, or a transient ischemic attack. What is that? Many times, a week or days before, you have some of these signs and symptoms, but they go away quickly. Sometimes in an hour, two hours, sometimes less, sometimes a little more, you make a full recovery. But if this happens, you definitely need to seek help, medical help, 
Because many times, in fact, I even have a statistic about this, 20% of patients, that is one out of every five who have this change, will have a stroke soon after in the following days. Look how interesting. If you seek help, you greatly reduce this risk and you can prevent it from happening. You already have a change there that wasn't enough to actually cause a stroke, but it has the potential many times to turn into a stroke. So it's time to act. Many times your body will warn you before you have a stroke and you should pay attention to the signs and symptoms. So now you already know what they are. Even if you recover completely, know that it's a serious warning sign. And yes, you should seek help. And what is the mistake that can really hurt your chances? The mistake is when you have one of these signs and symptoms, like weakness on one side, for example, or you have trouble speaking, or when you experience imbalance or dizziness. Many people end up taking some medication, like aspirin or some blood pressure medicine, to lower your blood pressure, thinking that if your pressure is lower, the symptoms will go away. Often, when you check your blood pressure, it's high, right? But it's important for you to see a doctor or go to the hospital as quickly as possible. In these cases, before you know what's really going on, aspirin is not recommended, unlike the protocol for a heart attack, right? In fact, I've already talked about this here on the channel, that many times the doctor will tell you to take aspirin while you're still at home. With a stroke, it's completely different because if it's bleeding, if you're having a hemorrhagic stroke due to bleeding, taking aspirin will make things much worse and will actually increase the risk of death. So you shouldn't take any kind of medication before seeking medical attention and getting a proper diagnosis. The same goes for medication to lower your blood pressure. When you have a stroke, often your body responds by raising your blood pressure. It's a defense mechanism to try to reduce the area that's not being supplied, that's not being irrigated, that's not getting oxygen. And if you bring blood pressure down to normal levels, often that area of ischemia, that area that's already compromised, will get bigger. So that's also a big mistake that can increase your chances of having lasting after effects. So when it comes to stroke, you should get to the hospital as quickly as possible to get a diagnosis. Remember, Time is crucial. In fact, there are medications available that can reverse this, depending on the cause. So getting a diagnosis is essential. Now, I'm going to leave a suggestion for you to watch. It's a video where I talk about 14 foods that don't raise your blood sugar levels. Did you know that high blood sugar levels are a major risk factor for having a stroke? If you keep that under control, you're also protecting yourself. So if you want to protect yourself from stroke, watch this video here. You'll find a lot of quality information there. Take care. See you next time.